Hey everyone, it's SCJ, your number one Apple and Android specialist. Today, I have Samsung J7 Pro with no power. According to my client, this phone has been in use for almost 4 years. But recently, it started showing suspicious performance. My client noticed that it would heat up very quickly while in use and then suddenly shut down. He tried some basic troubleshooting like pressing the power and volume buttons together to see if the phone would go into recovery mode but unfortunately it showed no signs of life. That's why he came to me for help as he has important data stored in the phone and needs it fixed as soon as possible after finding us near his location, he started to seek our service maintenance for social media. And we were lucky to have him as our client. So, what I'm going to do now? Of course, I will give my best effort to restore his phone fully functional. And I am proud to say that everyone watching right now, that I am grateful for your participation in this program please enjoy and be a part of our success as you can see after i plug it in the phone still does not show any signs of power this could potentially be caused by a variety of factors such as a faulty charger a damaged battery or a software issue but in order to determine the root cause and revive the phone I will need to gather more information and troubleshoot the device. So I invite you to join me today as we work together to bring this phone back to life once again. At this time, I am going to examine the contents of the motherboard. But before that, I need to carefully dismantle it, making sure to remove all the screws that hold the frame in place. This will make it easier for me to remove the middle frame and access the motherboard. Once I have done this, I will do some current reading on the motherboard to locate the main issue. To do this, I will directly put my multimeter probes into the main power rail. And luckily, the power rail seems to be functioning properly. But however, after conducting a thorough inspection of the motherboard, I have noticed that some of the CPU peripheral signals are missing. From this, I have determined that the issue can be solved by properly working the CPU and RAM. This will ensure that all necessary signals are being sent and received correctly. Again, the value of this phone is not in question here. It can be purchased at a much cheaper price in the market. However, my client's main concern is the data inside. This phone holds all of their precious memories and that is what makes it invaluable. Even if the device itself may be cheap, the memories and information contained within it are irreplaceable. This is why it is important to retrieve the data, regardless of the cost. Just think, if your old phones held something important to you, you would not hesitate to pay a high price to recover it. Believe me, and I bet you wouldn't disagree. However, it is important to note that this procedure should only be attempted by trained professionals who have experience and knowledge on how to use precision cutting tools properly. Without proper training and understanding, there is a high risk of damaging the delicate chips and components. It is always best to leave this task to professionals who have the necessary skills and equipment to perform such procedures safely and accurately. It is important to note that the SCJ Repair Shop assumes no responsibility or liability for any errors or omissions in this video. If you have not acquired the necessary experience, 
please leave it to the professionals to ensure that the repair is done correctly and safely. Attempting to fix a complex issue without proper knowledge or training can be dangerous and may result in further damage. In this part, I have successfully removed all the chips with accuracy and caution. This process was particularly challenging for me, not because the work was too difficult, but because the Samsung J7 Pro has an exceptional thin CPU. In fact, it is two times thinner than the most other Android CPUs, making it very delicate and increasing the risk of damaging the unit. Therefore, I must put forth my best effort to ensure the success of this repair. The positive line being broken may cause issues with the functionality of the CPU. So it is important to address it before proceeding with any further cleaning. Once the line is settled, the cleaning process can continue without the risk of damaging the CPU. To repair the broken positive line, it is necessary to first scrape away any damaged or corroded areas to expose the metal underneath. This will create a clean and open pathway for a jumper wire to be attached and create a new connection. After the jumper wire is in place, it is important to cover it with a layer of UV glue to secure it and protect against any electrostatic discharge which could cause further damage to the device CPU. This repair process will ensure that the positive line is reconnected and functioning properly. This next part is about cleaning the CPU and RAM. Since the CPU is thinner, it requires delicate and quick cleaning. I use a hot air gun set at a high temperature of 380 degrees Celsius and wind flow of 40 to quickly and securely clean the CPU. This helps to remove any dust or debris that may be affecting its performance. It is important to properly clean the RAM and all the chips before reballing them. This will ensure that there is no dirt or debris that could affect the performance of the chip after they have been reattached to the motherboard. And additionally, reballing the chips one by one is a meticulous and time-consuming process, but it is necessary to ensure that each chip is securely attached and functioning properly. If you encounter a similar issue to what I am experiencing today, please do not hesitate to seek help from our company's phone number or WhatsApp number. We are dedicated to providing a quick and efficient response to your concerns. It would be an honor for our company to be a part of your gadget reconditioning process. The Exynos 78 chipset is a powerful and advanced processor used in many electronic devices. This is accompanied by the SEC RAM IC, which is responsible for storing and accessing data at high speeds. When compared, the Exynos 7870 is a significantly thinner than the SEC RAM IC, which may pose a risk of damage during the reballing process. However, with careful handling, the success of reballing the chip and achieving desired result is still possible. Let's proceed with the process and test the outcome once it is plugged in. While I'm seriously processing all the chips, I want to take a moment to thank all my subscribers for their support, your views, comments, and likes mean a lot to me and encourage me to continue creating content for you. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to my channel and clicking the bell icon to stay updated on my future videos. Let's support each other on this journey.
After completing the cleaning and reballing process, it is now time to install the chips and see if the efforts have paid off. Hopefully, with the CPU pads thoroughly cleaned and all the chips correctly reinstalled, the device will function properly once again. Fingers crossed for a successful outcome after all the hard work. Now, this is the moment of truth. After all my hard work, let's see if it has all been worth it. I press the power button and wait with bated breath. The Samsung logo appears on the screen. It's a sign that I have successfully completed the process. And I can only imagine the joy of the person will receive their phone back. Restored and ready to perform at its highest peak, all my efforts and dedication have paid off. This concludes my video. I hope you gain valuable knowledge and idea that can help you in your career as a repair technician. Thank you for watching and I will see you again soon. Bye bye.